Hello everyone, and welcome back to How to Cheese It with Feng Wei. And as promised, a little bit later than I planned, but as promised, we're going to be talking all about shifting clouds today. So um, if you didn't see the previous video, basically we're covering parries and sabakis and reversals and all that sort of good stuff. So in the previous video, we talked all about the one plus two sabaki and the wild rising sabaki. Uh, we also went over how they work as well, so if you if you are still a bit unfamiliar with these and you need a bit of a briefing as to how to use setups and parries, then please do check out that video because it's kind of all explained at the start of that one, okay? But uh, but yeah, as promised, today we're going to cover Shifting Clouds, and it is quite a large topic to cover, so uh, I will try and keep this as concise as I can, but you know what I'm like, so, uh, <laughs> so bear with me here, okay? So, Shifting Clouds, anyway, let's uh, show you the move first of all, let's... Uh, give a little bit of a demo. So Shifting Clouds is this move, okay? Four, three, plus four. Okay? And he gives this really, really cool kind of like uh, airbending, whirling arms kind of animation, or <laughs> or Shifting Clouds animation, I suppose. Um, and yeah, it's it's a it's not just a reversal and a parry. Uh, it, basically, it's a stance. So so yeah, it's, uh, it's so much more than just a parry, basically. So Let's just go over the stance properties to start with. So when you're in Shifting Cloud, you've got access to some very, very basic strikes. And I mean, they are basic. It's basically a, a, you know, a two, a three, a four, and a one. That's about it. But you can also access Kempo as well. So that's a whole different video for a different day. But, um, but the basic strikes from Shifting Clouds are your two and your four, which is pretty good. I do use the four sometimes. And there's a the three, which I never, ever bloody use because everyone bloody ducks it. So <laughs> I've seldom ever used that. And you've also got a 1, so that's basically your strikes from Shifting Clouds. And if you press back during Shifting Clouds, you can go into Kempo. And you'll kind of know you've done that because he kind of thrusts his fist downwards and makes a bit of a grunting sound. It's quite a small window, but it's dead easy. It's there, uh, yeah, dead, dead easy. But I'm not going to go over all of the Kempo stuff because, like I say, that is a whole other stance and a whole video to itself. I'm just pointing out a few of the um, basics of the stance. So obviously, besides it being a stance, it also has a built-in parry, okay? So I'll just show you what that looks like in a minute. Okay, so it will look like that, okay? Pretty cool, pretty cool, nicely animated, really beautifully animated. So probably a good place to start with this is to compare it to our previous video, which was the one plus two Sabaki, okay? <clears throat> so there are some key differences here. Uh, there's some ways in which that it's better, Sorry, there's some ways that make it better, and there are some ways that are drawbacks to it, okay? So, the first benefit to this, I would say, is that you can actually intercept kicks and punches and a mixture of. So, I mean, that's one advantage you have with this over the 1 plus 2 Sabaki, okay? It's a bit more versatile in that way. Uh, the downside to it is that your opponent has to commit to more than one hit. So... You'll see I've got my opponent set to do a 1-2 afterwards, okay? Just so I can demonstrate all of these setups in a minute. But yeah, if your opponent retaliates or returns fire with just a single kick or a single punch, all that's going to happen is you're going to get this very brief kind of parry animation where you'll parry that single move. I don't know why I'm <laughs> demonstrating myself. Uh, that's a bit random. But um, I like to get descriptive with my hands while I'm talking. Um, but yeah, anyway, all that's going to happen if you intercept one punch or one kick, you'll just get that brief parry animation, but you won't really get anything from it, apart from style points, because it looks friggin' epic. So yeah, for it to work fully and to get the full reversal, your opponent has to commit to more than one attack. Or sorry, more than one, uh, more than one punish or whatever. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> um, so yeah, that is one drawback to it. But I mean, a lot of people do tend to commit to strings and stuff, so I mean, it's still pretty consistent. The other added benefit to the Shifting Clouds, I find, is that it has a much larger window when it comes to frames on setup moves. So if you'll remember again from the previous video yesterday, I discussed the, um, the frame window for your setup moves when it comes to setups for your parry, okay? Think of setups as kind of bait essentially you're baiting your opponent to, to punish or retaliate so exactly the same way a frame trap works okay um, so that window of um, of bait moves or setup moves for one plus two sabaki was minus one to minus five okay which gives you access to a few nice setups but certainly not as many as there used to be Shifting Clouds, on the other hand, I found has a much larger window, which means much, much more, many, many more setups. So the window that I seem to have um, found to be the most optimal for Shifting Clouds 
for shifting cloud setups is anything from plus two right the way through to minus seven, which is quite large. So, I mean, yeah, you do, there are a lot of setups. I mean, I've managed to fill up two whole sheets of paper here. So, uh, so yeah, buckle up. It's going to be a lengthy old video. And if you make it to the end, then, you know, <laughs> fair play hats off to you. Um, so, yeah, we've got a lot to get through. But, yeah, that window, that golden window of opportunity, basically, for setup moves with shifting clouds is anything from plus two right the way through to minus seven. There are a few grey area moves that might work, but I haven't included... I mean, I'll probably go over them at the end, but what I'm going to focus on is all of the setup moves that fall within that optimal window, because they are going to be your most optimal setups, all right? So... Something I should say about reversals and parries in general that I should have mentioned in the previous video is that they are inherently risky, okay? It is going to require... A lot of them are going to require you to condition your opponent to some degree for them to work properly, and it's also going to require you to read your opponent as well. You need to test them and see how they react to things. So so when you're using parries and sabakis, etc., etc., there is a lot of risk involved. It's risky business, basically. You don't just throw these out and hope for the best. Well, you can do. I mean, I sometimes do. We all do it. But it's going to work better if you can kind of condition your opponent a little bit or test them first to see how they react to things. That way you can mitigate a little bit of the risk. But I just wanted you guys to know as a kind of disclaimer that these things aren't bulletproof, okay? A lot of it depends on the situation and your opponent. These aren't just things that are, like, guaranteed or anything like that, okay? Some people seem to be under the impression that these setups are guaranteed, you know, and they're only really guaranteed if your opponent is going to respond the way you're hoping they respond. Um, so, yeah, <laughs> with that all out of the way, let's, um, let's move on to these setups then. All right, so that's what you're here for. And once again, I'm just talking way too much. So, okay, this is going to be your ultimate shifting cloud setup guide, okay? And I will give my brief um, thoughts on each one as to how effective they are because I have tested and tried most of these myself in quick matches and whatnot. Some I have more success with than others. So, um, so yeah, let's start off with the most basic ones, okay? So the most basic one is going to be your one jab, okay? So that's plus one on block, and that fits absolutely perfectly into our window like so. And another added benefit that I should have mentioned about this, in fact, uh, is that you get a full combo off of this reversal as well. Like so. Not the best example, but uh, yeah, I should have mentioned that. That's another great thing about this, is that you get a full combo off of it. Whereas with the other one, the, the 1 plus 2 Sabaki, all you get is a shoulder and a heat engager. So, um, like I said, I didn't give the best combo example there, but you can get a very, very nice juicy combo off this. It's all up to you. But uh, anyway, so yeah, that was our one jab, okay? Plus one on block, dead simple, okay? So then we have our one, two, okay? And that is minus three on block, so again, that falls perfectly within our window. That window of plus two right through to minus seven. So, two, there we go, okay? So as you can see, what's happening? We're basically baiting him. He thinks it's his turn, he takes his turn, and because he's committing to more than one move, we're pulling off the old reversal on him, okay? So that's essentially how it works, just like a frame trap, and just like I explained in the previous video. So our next one is our two jab, okay? Minus three on block, exactly the same, okay? So that one. Next one we have is our down forward one. That's a pretty good one. I've had some success with this. Down forward one's a pretty nice setup. Let's say if you're pressuring your opponent right and they're getting desperate to take their turn, that can be a good time to bust out a uh, shifting clouds. Uh, that one is zero on block, by the way, as well, so it still fits within our window, our uh, plus two to minus seven window. Uh, next we have our one three. Okay. So that one works pretty well. I've used this one on and off with varying degrees of success. That is minus five on block, so again, fits within our window perfectly. But yeah, I've used this one a few times on and off. Mixed results with this one. Sometimes it's really good, sometimes it's awful. It's uh, You need to get a feel for this one, I think. One of those ones you need to play around with and get your own sort of feel for it. 3-4. Um, so, this one's pretty interesting. Quite a good one. Works with Sabaki as well, that one. It works with the 1 plus 2 Sabaki because it's minus 7. The only reason it works with the 1 plus 2 Sabaki is due to the force crouch, though, okay? Because otherwise that would fall outside of the window with the uh, with the 1 plus 2 Sabaki. But anyway, that's irrelevant. That's a different topic. 
I'm going to stop talking about the OnePlus 2 Sabaki quite so much now because obviously we're trying to focus on shifting clouds here. But uh, yeah, the point of this one is it works. 3 4 works with shifting clouds and it works quite well, you know, if you can time it right. 3 4 is an inherently risky move, as I mentioned last time. Uh, you're airborne, so you're liable to get kind of chipped and juggled out of it. But I did give you a brief tip last time that you can sort of try and fake them out a little bit before you go for it. Like that, you know, maybe fake them out with a couple of back turns. But I mean, 3 4, and, and you know, it's a great move. It's got some brilliant mix up potential because you can go into back turn from it. So, uh, it's one of those moves you just need to develop a good sense of timing and space for it in order to pull it off right. But it is risky. I mean, it is a risky move. So, uh, so yeah. Um, what have we got next? I'm getting lost already on this sheet now. Okay, so 4-3, head spring. This one's an interesting one. I was testing this out recently in quick matches, and I actually managed to catch out a goal of destruction with it. <laughs> so it can be pretty good. Um, and you just don't see it either, because I'd never ever seen this before. Head spring into shifting clouds. Never would have thought it would have worked until I noticed that the head spring was actually uh, minus seven on block. And then, yeah, so so that's that. Uh, but yeah, I've been getting some very funny comments on uh, <laughs> on quick matches where I've been trying some of these out. Uh, but yeah, that was surprisingly effective. It's not amazing, but it is, you know, it will catch a few people out. Um, next up, we have got four three two, my favorite. Okay, so four three two. You'll see me use this all the time. It's one of my absolute favorites. Very, very consistent. Catches a lot of people out. I guarantee you check out some of my online matches. You'll probably see, you'll probably see me use this quite a few times. It's a, it's a really effective one. Okay. Really good one. That I can't recommend it highly enough. So please do incorporate that. What I do like to do when I'm going for that one, though, I do like to test them out a little bit first. So sometimes I might test them with a couple of... Uh, oops, not them. <laughs> a couple of uh, four, three, twos and see how they respond. So I might test them with a couple of these first to see if they're throwing stuff out afterwards. But you can, again, you can just bust out and hope for the best. Sometimes that works for me if I'm feeling lucky. Um, what do we got now? 4-3, okay, interesting one. So 4-3 can work. Uh, probably not one of the best because most people are going to be expecting a follow-up from that. You know, they're either going to be expecting the 4 or the 2 afterwards. But, I mean, uh, one thing I do like to do with 4-3 is I do like to kind of use it as a getting-in tool sometimes. I sometimes like to just poke at my opponent with this to try and get in and maybe initiate something. So once you've made that habit and they start cottoning onto that, they might get brave and start throwing stuff out afterwards. So in that case, you could possibly try your shifting clouds. So, uh, so keep that one on the back burner. It does work, but it's going to require a bit of conditioning, I think, for your opponent to fall for it. Um, what have we got next? Getting lost again on my notes. Uh, right, okay. So, down for 2 2. So, this one is a real point of contention with regards to the fact that it was. Um, it used to be a classic, classic vintage Feng Wei Sabaki setup for the OnePlus 2. Um, sadly, in the patch prior to our most recent one, so our most recent patch was patch 5.0. But the patch prior to that, they actually, for some reason, nerfed a few of the frames from the Sabaki setups window. So this one, whereas it used to be a classic Sabaki setup, no longer works. But thankfully, it still works with shifting clouds. So all hope is not lost. Okay. So that's minus six, and it falls just within our window. So yeah, it works fine as a Sabaki, um, as a shifting cloud setup. But sadly, it will no longer work with the Sabaki. But that could be a blessing in disguise. I mean, I've been thinking about this a while, and whereas beforehand I probably wouldn't have recommended it because it is such a well-known setup, now that that nerf has taken place, people are going to forget about the threat of the Sabaki now. They're going to think that it's now safe to start throwing stuff out after Downport 2-2. So why not treat them to a Shifting Cloud instead? <laughs> so I can see over time it's probably going to become more effective because more and more people are going to just assume that it's safe to attack after down forward 2-2 now because they're going to completely forget about the threat of the uh, OnePlus 2. But they're probably going to overlook the threat of the Shifting Clouds, or you'd like to hope anyway. So um, so yeah, keep your eye on it. It might be a blessing in disguise, the fact that they uh, nerfed it off of the OnePlus 2 Sabaki. Um, so where are we now? Down forward 3. Same scenario with this one. Same scenario. So this used to work with the OnePlus 2. Now it doesn't, but it does still work with Shifting Clouds. Okay. There you go. 
One of the seven on block. Just in our window. So yeah, really effective on that. Really, really effective one. Um, down forward four, so this could be pretty good. Basic, uh, basic kick, minus six on block. I think I have used this a couple of times. Um, I don't use down forward four that much, but, uh, but I know I have landed this a couple of times when trying it out, so I mean, it can be quite effective. I think I need to play around with it a bit more, but uh, I certainly have had some success with it. Okay. Um, down forward, 4-3. Okay, so this is quite an old school one, really. So, it's good, but it's risky as hell, because that second kick is very, very duckable. Most good opponents will duck it. I can probably see this working better at lower level, um, but certainly not at intermediate or higher level, because most people are going to duck that second hit. And to be honest, I probably wouldn't make a habit of throwing these out anyway mid-match. I just It's not something I would really do because it's just too risky. The only time I really use that is as a combo extender or for a bit of wall travel, you know? So, but yeah, I mean, it does work. And like I say, if they don't duck that, uh, that second kick, then it could be quite effective. So, so yeah, keep it on the back burner. You know, it's one of those things. If you notice your opponent isn't ducking that second kick and you're getting away with it, then uh, you'll probably you'll probably get away with a shifting clouds. So, um, that is that one. Uh, down forward four plus three. This one's an interesting one. Okay. So this is actually a really great move. It's a really underrated move. And it's you know, brilliant for catching out running in opponents, impatient opponents that run in. Especially if you've, the way I like to use it, if I've knocked my opponent down and sent them flying, sometimes they'll get straight back up and run in and so more often than not, if I do that, if I send them flying and knock them down, as soon as they start getting up, I might start initiating one of these, because it's a slow move, a very slow move. But more often than not, you'll catch them running in on you with this. You'll clip them as they're running in, and it's really, really effective. It does require some good timing and quite a bit of predictive ability. You need to be predicting your opponent a little bit. But it's a great, great move for catching running in opponents, it really is. But besides that, it is also a ideal shifting cloud setup. Uh, it doesn't give as much pushback as it used to, which is good. So, uh, so yeah, it can work as a shifting cloud setup. But obviously, the move is extremely slow, very, very telegraphed. So you need to watch out for that. So probably, as a shifting cloud setup, maybe not one of the most ideal. But the move in general is an interesting one. And like I say, my best suggestion for using the move is for catching out impatient opponents that are running in on you. All right. But you do need to, you know, get a good grasp on the timing with it. So what have we got next? Um, down back one four. Okay, so very very seldom use this. It does work, but I would very very seldom use it. I think I may have successfully done it a few times, but um, it's a bit of an iffy on that. It's not that consistent. Um, uh, down back one plus two. Another quite interesting one. I believe that's minus four on block, isn't it? Yeah, minus four on block. So yeah, that one can work. It's a move you don't see very often. I do occasionally use it. It's it's quite slow, but sometimes I'll bust it out, and you know your opponent isn't always expecting it, and it can work as a shifting cloud setup. I've played around with this a little bit in quick matches, and I landed it a few times, so it's not one of the worst, not one of the best, but um, but it works. Uh, so okay, now we have back two, three, four, two. Okay, so I'm gonna probably need him against the wall for this, because otherwise he's gonna move back. Uh, so back two, three, four, two, four hit string. I use this string all the time for mix-ups. It's got great, great mix-up potential. Um, I don't often use the full string unless I've sussed out that my opponent can't block the full string. In that case, I'll have used the hell out of it if I've figured out they can't block it, which does quite frequently happen, surprisingly enough. <laughs> You'll be amazed at how many times I've encountered a fairly high-ranked player that can't block that basic four-hit string. But uh, something that is worth noting is that you can actually shift in clouds off the last hit of this. So uh, There you go. Just like so. Now, ideally, in a real match, they'd block all four hits and you'd shift in clouds then, but 
obviously the reason I'm missing out those first few hits is because I've got the punishment settings on and if I touch him with anything he's just going to retaliate straight away and it's going to ruin the uh, shifting clouds so uh, it's just the weird ass practice mode settings I've got on the, well the punishment settings it just makes life a bit easier for me rather than keeping on going in and out and changing it but yeah that's how that works anyway you can shifting clouds off the last hit of that one so it's good to know good to know if you are going to be busting out that full string um what do we got now up two okay so again another move I don't really use that much um but yeah, it works as a uh, shifting cloud setup, so it's one to be aware of if you do use this move. Okay. But I mean, this one is also a... it can be used as a frame trap for back one as well, so... Uh, so people might be more inclined to respect it because it can be used, you know, because it's a plus move. Anything that is plus, people are more, you know, more savvy opponents are probably going to respect it if you've got anything that's kind of plus, so... Uh, so yeah, I'd be wary with that one. It does work, but... Uh, it's going to depend highly on your opponent and if you even use this move anyway. Uh, up forward one. Okay, so you all know I'm a huge fan of up forward one. It's a fantastically goofy looking move, but it is such a good setup for Sobakis. Um, yeah, it works for the 1 plus 2 Sobaki and for this one, so I'm not going to go on and on about it because I've already talked enough about this move in my previous videos. I absolutely love it. It's so good. Catches out so many people of all levels. But yeah, it works with Shifting Clouds. I'm probably more inclined to go for the 1 plus 2 Sabaki after this one. It's just, I think it's just force of habit. I always tend to go for the 1 plus 2 after this, but uh, the decision is yours. It works with both. Um, up for 3. I've started using this more. It's quite good, actually. So um, I think I underestimated this one in the beginning, but it is quite a good one. It's worth seeing how they respond to up forward three first of all, just to see if they do throw stuff out afterwards. But uh, but yeah, it is quite a good one. Um, so this next one is really interesting, Assassin's Bow, okay? So the first thing I want to say about this one is it is hugely risky, but it is also very, very good if you can get them to block the, uh, the three, the extension three. So basically Assassin's Bow is a kind of... It's a two-part move, so the first part of it looks like this, okay, and then, well, that's that's up forward one plus, uh, sorry, that's up forward three plus four, okay, but there's also extension as well, so if you press three during that time, you'll get this extension at the end, an extra kick, basically, a high, so you can, you can get a shift in clouds off this, and it's really, really good as well, but the problem is, most decent opponents, opponents will duck that, uh, that extension three, okay, and if that happens, you're going to be in big trouble because they're going to launch punish you and you're going to lose a lot of life, which is going to suck. So it's a huge risk, but a huge reward, I'd say, for this one. Because if you do connect that three extension on block, it's a very, very consistent shifting cloud setup. And I mean a very, very consistent one. I get huge success with this one if I connect that three on block. But that's the problem. It's connecting, you know, it's connecting that extension three on the block because most opponents will duck it. So it's whether or not you want to take that risk or not. Um, I'll just show you how it looks. I'm gonna have to space this right. There you go. So yeah, it's really, really good. Um, I would encourage you to try it just because of how good it is if you can connect that extension three. But I just really, really want you to... I, I really want to drum in how risky it is, because if they duck that extension 3, you're in big trouble. But if you can get them to block that extension 3, you're absolutely golden, and it's a very, very consistent shifting cloud setup. So, yeah, huge risk, but very good if, you, uh, if, if you're on the favourable side of that risk. Um, so, War Rising 4, this is a good one. Really, really good one, especially during pressure. You know, if you're pressurizing your opponent and you go for a wall rising four it's uh, it works really well i've had a few people with this you know especially if they're getting to that point where they're getting a bit desperate to take their turn it could be a great spot for a shifting clouds so so yeah i have nailed quite a few people with that of all levels so uh, definitely one to uh, keep your eye on keep him uh keep on the back burner rather um while rising two okay so this, again, used to be a really, really good setup for the 1 plus 2 Sabaki. Now it will no longer work with the 1 plus 2 Sabaki because it's now, uh, well, the 1 plus 2 only goes up to minus 5. 
setup moves. So, uh, but it does fall within our shifting cloud window. So, um, similar story with uh, down four three, and with the down four two two. It's no longer a Sabaki setup, but it does work for shifting clouds. So, uh, so yeah. But yeah, it's a very good one. That is. it's very consistent. So, uh, I'm glad we haven't lost it completely. Just got to remember to use shifting clouds as opposed to the one plus two. That's the problem. That's uh, making a conscious effort to do that because you, you know, especially if you've been playing, if you've been playing Feng for years like I have, you're so conditioned to using the one plus two, it can be difficult to retrain yourself to use the shifting clouds instead. Uh, wall rising one. Oops, that's not it. There we go. So yeah, that's. Uh, it works, but. I probably wouldn't recommend it because most people are probably going to respect that, or at least you'd hope. Uh, Feng can go a lot of places from a Wall Rising one, so most people I would imagine would respect that. But if you do find yourself up against an opponent that is constantly returning fire from that, then you might want to try them on a Shifting Clouds, see how it goes. But yeah, it does work, falls within the window, and it's uh, yeah, no reason why it shouldn't work if they're uh, if they're throwing out hits and returning fire every time. Um, this one's pretty good. Wall Rising 1-3. Okay. There you go. I've had a few people with that. It's pretty good. Uh, not one you see very often either, so it's, uh, yeah. That's a pretty good one to catch them out with. Yeah, definitely give that one a try. Um, okay, sidestep 1 plus 2. Now, straight away, I'm not going to recommend this one. It does work, as you can see. But... I think, as I mentioned in the previous video, this is a very, very famous back one setup or frame trap for back one. So most people, I'm going to say 90% of people, as soon as they see a sidestep one plus two, they should respect it, I would have thought, because they're going to be expecting a back one afterwards. Every time I see this move, I'm always expecting a back one afterwards, so I respect it. So, um, so yeah, I would be surprised if anyone fell for a shifting clouds. It might happen. I mean, if they're unfamiliar with the frame trap, then they might do. But certainly wouldn't recommend it, just because I think most people would probably respect that move. Um, while crouching, a down forward 401. So this one's not bad. I've had a bit of varying degrees of success with it. Not bad at all. It's um, it's okay. Not one of my favourites, but it, it can work. But, I mean, the move in general is quite risky, especially if they block the low. It's a very, very risky move. Um, where are we now? Okay, so this one I talked about in the previous video as well, because it works for both Sabaki and for the Shifting Clouds, and it's our back turned one. Okay. Now this one I like to affectionately refer to as the backup plan, so, um, well actually I've only just started doing that, so... <laughs> but as of now it shall be hereforth referred to as the backup plan. Because basically, you'll probably remember from the Frame Traps video, that if you can connect a back turned one on hit, you'll get a free shoulder out of it, okay? So I'll just demonstrate how that looks. Okay, so if you connect on hit that back turned one, you're guaranteed that free shoulder. So if you're fishing for that uh, that free shoulder, but they keep on blocking your back turned one, you know, you're trying your hardest, you keep fishing for that free shoulder, but they keep blocking the back turned one, then maybe you want to try them on a shifting clouds. Or maybe you want to try them on a 1 plus 2. So, um, so yeah, works like a backup plan, basically. If you're fishing for that um, for that shoulder, but you're not getting it, but you are noticing that maybe they're throwing buttons afterwards, so throwing punches and kicks and whatnot after the blocked, after the blocked back turn 1. That was a bit of a mouthful. I'm sure there was an easy way, easier way of explaining that. But, uh, but yeah, that can be really good. I've uh, had a few people out with that. Um, now we've got a headbutt, QCF 1 plus 2. Okay, it's a really, really good one, this one. It works pretty well. Oops, that's not it. What the hell? <laughs> Sorry. There you go. Four thumbs today. There we go. So you should be using this move a lot more now, because the recent patch saw this buffed. So the headbutt now, obviously, if you get a headbutt on counter hit, you get a free shoulder from it. So most people, you, know, you should be using this a lot more now, because you, know, it's, you get a lot more from it, basically. I mean, I still used it quite a bit anyway. I mean, you know... Even before the patch, I was still using this quite a bit. But I'm using it even more now because you get that counter at free shoulder. 
but also works as a shifting cloud setup as well, so uh, definitely worth bearing that in mind. Okay. Um, and the last one on our list is Shifting Clouds 2. Into Shifting Clouds. Which is a bit of a mindfuck. <laughs> shifting Clouds 2 into Shifting Clouds. There we go. Uh, i got to be honest, I don't use Shifting Clouds 2 very much, but I can imagine it would be pretty good if you do use Shifting Clouds 2. In fact, I'm going to probably test that out a bit more next time over there. Next time in quick matches, just to see if it's any good. I can't imagine why it wouldn't be. I mean, if they block that uh, Shifting Clouds 2, there's nothing really much you can do from Shifting Clouds 2, so I can't see why they wouldn't be tempted to retaliate. So, so I can imagine it might be pretty good. Pretty good. Up to uh, time will tell with that one. But yeah, that basically is all of our setups. Uh, it was quite a mountain to get through, so congratulations if you've made it this far and you're not asleep or bored to tears. Um, but yeah, that is currently all of the setups that I know of that will work. Okay. Um, like I say, there are a couple of grey area ones, which I don't even know if I should really mention really, because they are just kind of grey areas. They kind of... they fall outside of the window and they're plus moves, so basically, because they're plus moves, people are going to treat them like frame traps, so they're probably going to respect them anyway. But it's basically, just for note, it's the back three, and also the while running three. Now both those are plus six on block, so they fall well without, you know, well outside of our window. Um, and it seems to be move dependent as well. I mean, it seems to be working when Kazuya retaliates with a one plus two. Um, but there's certain other moves that it won't work with, so it really does depend on the speed of the move that your opponent is retaliating with. So it's just, it's a grey area, and it's probably not worth the risk to be honest, especially given that they're you know, plus six on block, so most people are going to respect them anyway because they're frame traps, so uh, so probably not even worth mentioning them, to be honest. But all of the setups I've mentioned here, they all work for kicks and punches. I have tested it, believe me. Um, I, yeah, I've tested this on... I'll, I'll just... I'll show you a couple of them just to show you how it looks if you're uh, reversing a kick. It's good to demonstrate that, I suppose. Uh, where are we? Okay. Set that. Set the crouching punishment as well. Okay. Right. So, I have tested all these. They all work with kicks and punches, but just for reference, this is how it's going to look. Okay. There we go. Alright. Two. Good. Yeah, you, you get the picture, but believe me, I've tested all these with kicks and punches and a mixture of, okay, so it's not, it doesn't have to be just kicks or just punches, it will work with, let's say if you went for a, a jab and a kick or vice versa, it would still work, okay, so yeah, that is your ultimate Sabaki, sorry, your ultimate shifting clouds setup guide, <laughs> um, I hope you found it useful in some way or entertaining in some way, I hope I haven't bored you all to tears, because this was quite a lengthy one to get through given all the setup options there are. Um, oh, I just remembered the one I missed off, actually. Um, I think I have to do this from some distance. I think up back um, up back two will work. Oh, I need him against the wall for this. Yeah, I'm pretty sure up back two, two will work. Yes, that one will work as well. That's one to bear in mind. But again, that's a move that I don't use very much, so bear it in mind, but I very rarely use that move. But yeah, that is all of our setups for Shifting Clouds, and also I gave you a bit of a brief description of Shifting Clouds, so um, one more use to this move that's probably worth mentioning is that you can also time it during combos as well, so if your opponent is throwing a lot of strings at you, something I quite often like to do is if I know the openings in their strings, then push into it with the Shifting Clouds, and it can be really, really effective, and it'll certainly stop them trying to mash strings on you as well. If you know, I mean, this all comes down to knowledge, basically, it's knowledge checks, so if you know the gaps in your opponent's strings, then you're at an advantage right away there. But, you know, it can work brilliantly if you can push into it with a shifting cloud at the right times. It, believe me, it'll soon deter them from mashing strings at you. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's another great way to use shifting clouds. And the sabaki, to be honest. I mean, you can do it with the sabaki as well. But shifting clouds is a bit easier because it'll intercept kicks and punches. 
So, yeah, thank you ever so much for tuning in, guys. Um, hope you've enjoyed it. If there is anything else that you think I should add to this, then please uh, drop that in the comments because I'm sure I've probably missed something. I always do. I mean, it's being such a large topic to cover, there's bound to be something I've missed out about this. Um, but yeah, um, thanks. I want to say thanks again for all the support I've had on these uh, on these guides. Um, I was, I was, I'm, I'm a bit blown away as to how um, how positive the reception has been to these. I didn't really think anyone was going to be that interested, but they seem to be doing quite well, and I'm really enjoying filming them as well. So um, it's a win-win, really. I, I'm really enjoying filming these. Uh, but this one was quite a knackering one, to be honest, because it was a lot to get through. So I'm looking forward to a, a break now. <laughs> So I will see you next time, guys. Good luck trying these, and be sure to let me know how you get on, okay? So until next time, take care.